Today we are going to rebuild Athletic Bilbao. Now it's a club that everybody loves doing on Football Manager at some point throughout the years, mainly because of one special feature in Bilbao is that you cannot sign non-Basque players. It's going to be the hardest one to try that really, isn't it? You Pretty much. You can't sign any of the players. No, you can only sign players from the area that Bilbao is from. So I imagine Basque is a little bit bigger than like, you know, Devon. Yeah. But it would be very similar to like, you can only sign players yeah. from the south of England. Yeah. So, which makes it very difficult because there's also another two teams in this area. And we yeah, can see yeah. on the fierce rivals, Sociedad and Osasuna. Mm. And let me tell you a bit of a spoiler. When I tried to sign a player from Sociedad or Osasuna, they weren't coming, no matter yes. what you were going to offer. So <laughs> it's very territorial. It's very much the club that you support or you've gone through. You won't sign for the other. It's like Plum of Argo trying to sign an Exeter player. An Exeter he ain't player. Come down he here, isn't he? at all. No. <laughs> but another feature that I think of Bilbao, actually, it's more of like a personal touch of Bilbao. Nico Serrano, who is a, a player in Bilbao's Youth Academy right now, follows me on Instagram and I've had some good conversations with him. He's broke into the first team this season at the end of last season this season because I did a Wonder Kids spotlight on him. You might have remembered it from last year and he watched it and he's he follows me on Instagram. Well, he's probably going to love this one then, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's nice. It's nice. Good luck with your career, mate, if you are watching. Absolutely. Yeah. Well played, Nico Serrano. So let's look at this team then from the off because great history yeah unbelievable history yeah, yeah. well they're one of, one of the well the third successful team in spain yeah um never been relegated from, that is, the, from the top league that is Only massive three teams when you consider that. low like recent times yeah. obviously back in the past i'd imagine it didn't matter too much because a lot of clubs did it but recent times by transfers from all around the country can happen you see barcelona and real madrid signing every single well, player under the sun yeah and you can't do that here no, that's right yeah so i think their achievement really is probably a better achievement of staying in that league than Barcelona and Real Madrid staying in that Yeah, league. yeah. Very underestimated, yeah. I think. And like you mentioned, they've won eight La Ligas in the past, but the last one was in the 80s. A very dominant spell, in fact, in the 80s where they won back-to-back. -back. So the team that they have right now is still very good. One yeah. of the best, I'd say, top five, top six clubs in La Liga. Uh, they have some fantastic players. It's just keeping all of them because, yeah. remember, we can't really replace them. Um, so the uh, Williams, they got two of them. Iñaki Williams being one of them. Little fact that you might not know, is this guy hasn't missed a game in La Liga for about five years. And you can see it here. So from 2016-17 all the way to 2020-21. That takes some doing. No suspensions or injuries. Yeah, that takes some doing. What Absolutely. position is he playing? Uh, so he's more of an attacking midfielder or a striker, which says it even more, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mr. Reliable yeah. in Yaki Williams. And his brother, Nico, who I've, I've done quite a lot of videos for in the past, to be fair. He's also now broke through into the first team. Nico Williams, 19 years of age. Another quality player. Wouldn't it be funny if... Nico was the reason why Inyaki didn't get picked at one point. Yeah. <laughs> That's something that obviously might happen in the future. So they do have very good players. There's one position where I think they're really struggling with, though, and it's striker. Yeah. Uh, we've got Inyaki Williams. He can play up front. But Rudy Garcia is mainly their only other striker, their main one, and he's 35. Yeah. He's getting on. Yeah. And the ones after that, I just don't think are very good. they got this man here, uh, who's more of a winger anyway. And then their fourth choice best is Asia Velabria. Or Valabra, 23, but nah, he's not very good. No. He's not very, very average player, especially for this league. So that's why I think we might struggle. So what we're going to have to rely on is a fantastic youth academy, which they do have. They have a lot of really good players, um, but that is what we might struggle with. So transfer-wise, we know it's going to be really difficult. We know we're not going to be able to sign hardly anybody. And what they are doing, to be honest, is just getting free transfers of players who mainly used to play or like youth academy players yeah. from uh, the Basque area. I did sign somebody though. Yeah. 750k. We have Enric Saborit and he's a former athletic Bilbao player. You can see here's a left back and we actually do need a left back. We've yeah. got a couple of good players there, but as soon as I just seen there, there was somebody available to sign. I thought, I'm just going to sign him. Yeah. So 750k, he's playing right now in Maccabi Tel Aviv. We signed him. Uh, they got him on a free transfer from us a long time ago, about four or five years ago. So yeah, we welcome him to the club, back to the club. So now really it's all about the tactic side of things. Yeah. What can we achieve with Bill Bow? And I definitely think if we manage to get Champions League football, it's an achievement. 100%. Some tricky teams. You're not, you're not going to get in between the two top teams for a start are you and then you yeah. and then you've got the other ones following very close Valencia Seville yeah um and Atletico Madrid as well yeah so you've got so the, that's always very good Atletico our rivals Madrid. of yeah. course yeah so yeah that's going to be the that's going to be the tack so tactically then I've gone with a very very standard 4-2-3-1 mm -hmm. they they have the players for it definitely uh it's really aggressive 
the most important thing about this, it's really, really aggressive in its uh, pressing. And I think that's the way to look at it. We've got some really good hard working midfielders. They're not the technically the best players yet, but there's a couple of like 20 year olds uh, that are just good, but they need a little, they need a couple of years. This man here, Oisan Sanchez, very good player, but he's 21 and he's got good potential. He'll get better. And yeah. I've seen him get better time and time again. So there's players like that we need to put our trust in. Uh, and another one is this man here, uh, Vencedor, very similar to that, 20 years of age, quality player, just need to keep hold of him, give him game time. So I think that's what we need to do. So playing this tactic then at the start, we have done quite well. We haven't even conceded a goal in three games, in fact. Exactly. We yeah, started definitely. off with a 3-0 victory against Levante. Uh, Rudy Garcia, Vencedor and Villabra got the third. A 2-0 win away to Espanyol. Yeah. And a 2-0 home victory against Sevilla. That's a good result. That's a very good result yeah. indeed. Uh, started off with a penalty, but we've got Oihan Sanchez who got the second there. Next two are games really hard, don't they? Really difficult. Yeah, Real Madrid go. and then Sostad, who of yeah. course are fierce rivals. And they've got one hell of a team. Have they? Oh yeah. my god, yeah. They've got some great strikers and, uh, and stuff like that. So, I mean, players like Griezmann and stuff, they actually qualify as Basque only. Uh, mainly because even though they were French, they were brought up in the Basque area. Yeah. He played for Sociedad, that's the team that he came through, but it's very difficult and Griezmann in the third year, I think is on a million pound a week mm. in this game. So it's very impossible to sign players like yeah. that. I think we should be, we, we're not in any European competitions or anything like that. So this first season is gonna be quite interesting to see what our focus is, whether we can get do well in the cup. Uh, they got history in the cup. You see the, the Super Cup though, we're in the semi-final against Barcelona. Yeah, it's weird the Super Cup, isn't yes. it? Yes. In Spain. But looking at that result, Barcelona there, just one of the things I did pick up on, um, Atletico's highest result against Barcelona was they beat them 12-1. What, in the league? Yeah, and it was oh Bar it was Barcelona's worst ever defeat. Bloody hell. And that was in 1931. So they're quite capable of doing it. Yeah, I mean, I always look back to when I've watched things about Maradona, when he played at Barcelona, and the one game that always sticks out is that Copa del Rey final, yeah. where it started in a fight. And I don't <laughs> think it was Maradona's fault, but no. all I remember is him volleying people from Bilbao. <laughs> and and like a lot of people were speaking about how dirty of a team Bilbao was yeah. back then, because they targeted Maradona. And like, I mean, if you played that game in this modern day, there would be about 11 red cards yeah. because oh, yeah. the game was savage. Yeah. It really was. The tackles that were going in, mm. they weren't even getting yellows. No. <laughs> They wouldn't even well, they probably threatened the referee as well, didn't yeah, they? That's yeah, that's why. it. But they look like a scary team. Very different to the team that we have now in Bilbao, yeah. but still. So, okay, let's simulate this first year and see how we do. So, the first season, we finish in third place. Here we go. I That's guess, a great start. Definitely, yeah. Two points off Real Madrid. Two points. Anyway, Only man. four points behind Barca. Absolutely, yeah. That's a hell of an achievement. Yeah. Hell of an achievement. And a long way from fourth as well, so it was a comfortable third. Comfortable third, and a long way, 14 points above Atletico Madrid. Yeah. So, I mean, we've done exceptionally well. Uh, let's take a look at the profile of, of the league then, because then we can see, I mean, we had no players in the goals, average rating assists, nothing. <laughs> How did this happen? We got a great team. goal difference. It's a team of performance, it's isn't it? I mean, look effort. at Man City this season. They win the league. Who's the league goal scorer? The centre Kevin midfield player. Yeah. yeah. On what? 13, I think it was? Yeah, so 14. 13, yeah, 14 or something like that. Yeah. So, team they've performance. Added, that's what we've just done. Then they've added Haaland. Oh. Uh, Osasuna got relegated. So, that's a Basque nation, well, a Basque club that we could look at yeah, potentially stealing players. some players yeah. who their pride might be a bit damaged by yeah. getting relegated and be like, all right, I'll yeah, come. Yeah, we're not playing against you this season, we'll let you have them. Yeah. Other competitions then, how have we done? Well, we got knocked down the fourth round by Tenerife. <laughs> I mean, I'd still take that because finishing in third place means we get Champions League football. Yeah. The money is enough, that means nothing to us. We can't do anything about it, but still. And it does look like by the league positions, we are comfortably in that top three or four all every, season, and we even yeah. got to second at one point the yeah. whole season. And it looks like for the th the final third of the season, we were in third place yeah. and we were there and we were comfortable. So yeah, I think we've got to be really happy with that. And there are some massive results so we as lost well. that semi-final as well. Lost the semi-final, but yeah. we beat Barcelona 2-0 at the new Camp. Great result there. We beat Real Sociedad 2-1. 
at their stadium. Great result there. Yeah. That's a 93rd minute winner as well. Ooh. So yeah, we've done exceptionally well. We've even beaten clubs like Real Betis 7-2. Seven, seven we know how good they are as a, as, a, yeah. as a club. So some really good results, especially towards the back end of the season. The first end, we had a couple of like draws and stuff, which cost us were unbeaten against Barcelona in the league this season. And that was a 93rd minute winner as well. That's it. I see that next game that we were playing, like, we lost 5-2 to Real Madrid. Yeah, that's where it's cost us obviously finishing in second place yeah. and obviously actually winning the league as well. Father's Day is round the corner and our friends at Manscaped have given the best gift ideas for you to get your pops on Father's Day. And they have just launched a brand new product for this year. So dad, happy Father's Day. Thank you, son. Introducing the new Manscaped Boxers 2.0. Nice. Sweaty sack summer is approaching. It's about time that you think of the comfort of your crotch. Do you chafe? Do you get sweaty balls? Well, Manscaped has spent the last two years coming up and designing the brand new Manscaped Boxers 2.0, which is gotta be the most comfortable boxers out there. They are nice. I mean, the pair from the Performance Package 4.0, we've both mentioned already the comfiest yeah. boxers that both of us oh, yeah, own. Definitely, yeah. And now I can't wait for my balls to feel like they're being cuddled by clouds. <laughs> so it's got a tagless waistband for comfort. There's front, pouch access for easy access and let me tell you if your partner sees you with the manscape brief tag on your boxes you're gonna need easy access because they're coming for you <laughs> size doesn't matter but cleanliness definitely does it is the softest fabric around to keep the plums well ventilated and the fabric won't peel or shrink no shrinkage they're not that just the boxes. Oh. They can't prevent any other type of shrinkage. Now remember, using my code OMEGA at manscaped.com gives you 20% off plus free shipping. So you need to take advantage of this. Father's Day is just around the corner. Make sure you get that gift. But if you're thinking that's not enough to get my dad, maybe you go for also the performance package 4.0. We spoke about it before. You get the lawnmower 4.0. You get the weed whacker. You get the gift bag. You get the t-shirt and of course the first edition of the boxes. Yeah. That whole package also comes with ball toner and oh. ball deodorant. And they smell incredible, oh, by the do, way. Oh, they do, yeah, they do. Yeah, I Even mum says that. Yeah, I do. What? <laughs> Manscaped are looking to go further than just ball trimming. And I think they are changing the game with the most comfiest boxers on the market. So head on over to manscaped.com. Use code OMEGA for your 20% off. Get yourself a gift. Get your father a gift for Father's Day. And your thigh slappers will definitely be thanking you. So not a bad first season. No, happy with that, mate. Yeah. You. Definitely happy with that. Iñaki Williams and, Ru and Raul Garcia was our top scorers, both on 19 goals there. Raul Garcia also got himself 11 assists. But again, he's 35. How long will that last? How long can he keep that going? So we didn't even have like that good average ratings for some of these. So oh, it's interesting, isn't yeah. it? Okay, we'll go on forward to the second season. Now, I actually signed two players. This summer. Yeah. I'm still finding them. Don't know how. This guy actually came through the Real Sociedad Youth Academy, but I think he moved to Real Madrid very early in his career. Well, maybe not that early, to be fair. He did play quite a few seasons at Real Sociedad. He's just got no pride and was happy to come to Bilbao. <laughs> but we signed Audra Zola. Money, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For £10 million. He's like, Champions League football? Yeah, go on then. He's a quality right back, to be fair. I yeah. mean, the fact that we've managed to pick him up so cheap, I'm actually quite shocked with. But he will come in as our first choice Right back. The only bad problem is, you mentioned money, we're paying him a lot. That's a wedge. Yeah. I, I, I dare say that's probably the most that we're probably paying a player, a player right now. So he joins the club, but he's not the only one. We did sign a player from Osasuna. Now, it's a regen. He's 16 years of age, but we don't get a lot of options. No. And we had the money to do it, so I thought, why not? We'll bring in John Hernandez right now. It's so cheap, it's almost free, like less than a million pound, and yet he has a great potential, and he looks quite good to begin with, with a decent... Uh, mental attributes, including light height and personality. And it's, and it's the position we need, a, we need someone in. So. Exactly. Yeah. So risk-free in four years' time, he might be a number one striker. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, we did let a few players go. Unai Lopez was already a deal that was on the out anyway. Uh, we've loaned out Nico Serrano, my mate. Uh, we loaned him out to Ibiza. I thought, party time. <laughs> yeah. Go on, Nico. <laughs> Fill your boots. Get exactly what I said. Yeah, yeah, so, and then come back to us again. Yeah, he, he's going to be loving that. Yeah. Uh, expect a message on Instagram to say absolutely thoroughly enjoyed Ibiza. Uh, then we've let out a few players go but only for 1.2 million pounds so not too bad we're gonna stick with a very similar tactic to what we did in the first season of course because why wouldn't we uh so it's pretty much exactly the same and just try and build on what we did last time but of course now we have champions league football which might hinder some of our league form yeah we know we can't we can't forget that we didn't have any european football last time uh so all of our players were fully rested every single time we come up against 
these clubs in the Champions League, in the Europa League. So we need to remember that now. Schedule-wise then, we haven't started as well as what we did last season. Getafe was a 1-0 loss. It was a very a poor game because we actually lost the player, Sabar, at the left-back. Uh, six after six minutes. So that kind of hindered us straight from yeah. the off. We did pull it back though. This is uh, R9's team, Real Valladolid. Uh, we beat them 4-1 away from home. Great stadium. Uh, Celta Vigo, a 2 or draw. Can be a tricky game. Yeah, yeah. But we've pulled that one back. Mallorca, a 4-1 victory. So we endured our time in Mallorca. But then Granada, we lost 2-0 at home. That's bad. That's a poor result. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Let's take a look at our Champions League group because this is a very difficult got... Champions League group. Ooh. That's like four very similar clubs, yeah, if you ask me, yeah. in regards to quality. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to Jose Mourinho's yes. Roma. Yes. The day that we're recording this, they have just won the Europa Conference League the night before. 1-0 uh, victory against Feyenoord, so that was a good result for them. he's become the first manager to win. Win all three. All but three it's, obviously it's the first time that they've done it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but, yeah. But I, I did see a funny fact that he's been in 15 cup finals and only lost one of them. Yeah. And he had David De Gea and go for that one. <laughs> uh, not too bad. I think um, we can still definitely progress through that. I'd like to think that we'd finish above Roma. I think we'll be in the Europa League, mate. You think? <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be in the Europa League. We'll see, we'll see. All right, okay, let's simulate this second season. So, the second season, we finish in fourth place. Villarreal, they went right in there, didn't they? Villarreal, I mean, they got a decent team, of course. Yeah. You know, they uh, did very well last year winning the Europa League. They're very well in the Champions League this year. But I'll, I'll settle for that, man. I'll settle for that. No, if we had the same points tally as what we did last year, I think we would have won the league. 86 points we had last season. 81 points was champions this year. <sighs> It's mental when you see it? things like that, isn't it? Yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah, because I've seen like Liverpool fans kicking off saying, "Oh, if we had this league, ta the this league tally, we could have won this amount of league yeah. titles." It's like it doesn't matter. You you didn't. That's right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, another team's got more points than you. Yeah, no matter what season In it that, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Fergie once won the league with around about seventy nine points. I yeah. think that was the lowest he ever won the league with. But yeah, it's mental when you see things like that. But we still got Champions League football. Uh, we won that by two points over Valencia. Atletico Madrid drop and out into six place that keeps, that keeps the money coming in it? and also if we are on the fringe of buying any players they will come to us then yeah yeah because of the uh you know the the champions league, the champions league yeah. obviously is uh, quite an attraction isn't it yeah. so that's definitely something right okay then how did we do in that champions league though we got knocked out in the quarter finals by chelsea what an achievement that is that's not bad at all. I don't no. think I've ever seen Bill Bow in the Champions League quarterfinals no. in my lifetime, maybe. So, I mean, we'll take a look at the group stage and see how it did. It's being played out between Liverpool and Man City in the final. And Inter Milan won it last year. So, if we go to stages and take a look at the uh, group stage and we can find out exactly how we did. We have qualified in second behind Benfica. Roma um, come last, with three Roma come last. Yes, yeah, so they didn't even make it into the Europa League. Yeah. Uh, what about then our first round knockout stage? We did eliminate Inter Milan. We eliminated the holders. <laughs> eliminated the holders. Two one, and they they we beat them two 0 at the Giuseppe Miazza as well. So that's a great result, and they could only find one goal when they come to us in the quarterfinals. We were eliminated by Chelsea. Oh, by one goal. 5-4 yeah. on aggregate. We beat them 4-2 at Stamford Bridge. It was just the home tie. That's a kick. That's a kick in the dick, I, isn't it? It's one of the things I always say, that you've got to win in Europe, you've got to win your home games. Yeah. We were the only Spanish club to get that far yeah. in the Champions League. They have been in two cup finals. They've been in two UEFA Cup finals. 1977, they lost to Juventus on away goals. Yeah. Over two legs, obviously. And in 2012, they lost to Athletic Madrid 3-0 up at... I remember that. Yeah. I remember that game actually because that was then I think uh, the year after is when Atletico won the league. Mm. I think. Talking about Atletico Madrid, there's a little story here about why we play in red and white stripes and Atletico Madrid play in red and white stripes. It's not a kit maker in Birmingham again, is it? No. That always <laughs> seems to be the story. <laughs> Quite close. Yeah. It was um, a student, a Spanish student. He, he was involved in both of the teams somehow. I don't know how he was involved in both of the teams. He was on the board of one team and something to do with Atletico Bilbao as well. And um, he's come to London to obviously learn. Yeah. And um, he was asked, he was given a task as well. We used to play in blue and white stripes going back in the day. What Bilbao did? Yeah. 
And then he was asked to, to try and get a new kit while, yeah. we, while he was in London. And they were looking at the Blackburn kit, because Blackburn had probably then played in blue and white, on yeah. the sounds of it. And he couldn't get it. He just couldn't afford to get whatever the money they, they offered him, to, and he just couldn't afford to get it. So while he was waiting for his ship to, to come back to Spain, he was in Southampton. Ah. Of course, he's gone to one of the shops over in Southampton, and, and he could get a red and white strip. Yeah. And um, he, he bought 50 shirts yeah. he took back with him. And um, they decided to change their kit then completely back to red and white. Yeah. But because he had 50 shirts, they only needed 25. So he donated 25 shirts to Athletic to Madrid. Athletic Madrid. And that's why we play in the same kit as what Athletic Madrid do. It's all to do with he bought the kits at Southampton. So Southampton are, are the reason why the two teams play in red and white stripes. I wonder then if we donated our kits to Sociedad because they play in blue and white stripes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? But that is quite weird, isn't yeah. it? That's, that is bizarre. There's quite a, few, quite a few rebuilds we've done over the years, isn't it? That it comes back to somewhere along the line. Somewhere in English, England. Yeah. I mean, Atletico Babao were... Um, started off by English people as well. Okay. In the docks, they had a lot of English people come across from Southampton to work in the docks yeah. in Spain because they were all, they used to play football and all that. They got in with the locals and then they started a football team and that's ah. where Atletico Babao started. Half English and half Spanish. How ironic that now they're only allowed to be from Basque. <laughs> yeah. But the club originated through English people. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So yeah, so a <laughs> little bit of interest there. Yeah, lovely little stories like that. Uh, so in the cup competition then, we only got to the quarterfinals and eliminated by Real Betis. The Copa del Rey, I'm sure, will get further at some point. Uh, but that was won by Barcelona against Batiz, who actually won it this year, by the yeah, way. Yeah. They did really well. Obviously, we mentioned, didn't we, in, yeah. in the rebuild that we did with Batiz. Uh, but yeah, they actually went on and won that. That's, that's the trophy I really want to win. That's the trophy. The big I one. Just, I just love that. When you yeah. see them winning that cup, you just think, look at the size of that. Yeah. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that you you like that one. I like yeah. the DFB Pacal. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's our two trophies. I like this one mainly because every time I've seen it, I always think of the Real Madrid when they dropped it off the bus. Oh, yeah, with Sergio Ramos. <laughs> and the bus went over it. Amazing. <laughs> So goals wise then, Inyaki Williams got 22 goals. If you look, he played 47 games. I wonder whether he's still got the record. We're two seasons in now. Has he still got the record of playing in every single game? No, Ooh. Ooh. it was this year. This year was the first year. Obviously, I didn't guarantee anybody sign-ins. Did he get injured or did oh, we drop he him? he did, look. He got oh, he injured. Did. He sprained his ankle ligaments. And he twisted his knee, which was yeah. out for five days, uh, versus Barcelona. So, I reckon he might have come back for that one. But in training, when he lost three weeks there in March, he's probably missed the four games through that. Yeah. Oh, I bet he was gutted, because yeah. that is some record yeah, for, yeah. for Nyaki Williams. Right, okay then. On to season number three. Now, seeing as we can't really sign many players, what I thought I would do is I'd really focus on the coaching staff. So as you can see, the year that I came in, I signed a lot of coaching staff. And I continue to do that these last couple of years. And it's got to the point now where if you look at our staff, we have the best coaches yeah. in the league. We have 11 out of 11 coaches. We have as many staff members as physically possible. But coaching wise, we are incredible. And if we take a look at the, uh, the training and the coaches, these are as high as what I can possibly get them right now for the coaches yeah. that I've been able to bring in. So year by year, this is what I usually try and do, but I thought I'd highlight it mainly this it's year. It's one of the things as well where people on. don't concentrate on the playing this game as well, don't they? That yeah. the backroom staff is just as important as what the players are. Yeah. You know, and, and I've noticed that you do concentrate on this as well to help us. So. 100%, because development yeah. of players yeah. is vital. So if you are struggling with your teams, this is one of the playing things that you can look at to improve. Yeah. Definitely. A little cheat if you are a bit lazy or you forget, get yourself a technical director, go on responsibilities, on to staff, Staff, and you can get them to hire technical. You can get your te technical director to hire staff members for you. If you get a good one, they us they usually get good staff members. Yeah, I've been doing it myself, but I have him there just to do all the under under like under nineteens and stuff yeah. coaches because that's just too much for me. But you can also get them to renew all the contracts as well. So obviously, if you're simulating like this, you tend to miss a lot of the staff contracts. Yeah. So that's just one little tip. Uh, for you there if you are a little bit lazy with it. Now, we've had a lot of offers, as you can see here, for some of our players. Man City's coming in there for Vencedor, but at the minute, he's happy to stay at the club. He's starting to feel he deserves a new contract. He isn't wanting to leave. He just wants a new contract, yeah. and that's absolutely fine by me. But he is developing really nicely. If we take a look at the actual transfers itself and go on to that, no players in. However, at the end of last season, I brought back Ander Herrera. Obviously, Manchester United bought him off Bilbao. Yeah. And now he's 34 years of age. He's been playing in PSG for a while. He's still quality. I've got to say, experience. Yeah. Best thing you can have in a team experience. Got great natural fitness as well, so he can still last even though he is 34, but the work rates and everything like that, 
is something to really look into. Yeah. And I think the reason why I brought him in is because to bolster that midfield, I think we're going to change something here and we're going to go strikerless. Right. Inyaki Williams has been scoring a lot of goals. He hasn't been scoring that many goals. Yeah. And he's been playing at front majority of the time. Whereas now it gives us the option to kind of play attacking midfielders, play him in a more predominant role that he is used to. And we're going to go for it like this. And I've got Nico Williams guaranteed to play as many games as he possibly can on the right because he's developed nicely now. And I think we need to continue giving him that game time. Yeah. Whereas my assistant prefers not to play him. So if I show you uh, pick without restriction on the best 11, you'll probably see Nico Williams leave. Yeah. So Inyaki Williams fills in the role on the right. We still got Munain. We still got Oihan Sanchez there. Herrera comes into the box to box and Vencedor in the deep line playmaker. So. It means that Nico Williams will drop down to the bench, whereas I think for future wise, we need to play Nico Williams a lot more. So that's the main reason for doing that. But you can see kind of what the assistant would be playing without us, and probably he'd be playing a Nyaki on the left there, uh, where this man sits right now, or in that center yeah. center attack midfielder instead of Munayin or Sanchez. So that's what I'm thinking anyway. And we started off the season incredibly well. We've only played two games. We beat Getafe 4-1. So that's a good start to good begin start. with. And Nico like Williams yeah. scored two as well. Yeah. Uh, and then we beat Cadiz 2 0 as well. And Herrera and Hoyhan Sanchez got one. Not bad. Good okay, start. Look at the games there. We, 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 could, we could get a good start to the league before we start even playing anybody. We don't play anyone difficult, difficult really, no. there until Batiste. Yeah. Um, and then it does mean that we'll probably come up all against them at once. And you can yeah. see our November there is Celta Vigo, Real Madrid, Sociedad, and Barcelona, including. Yeah. A Liverpool, Liverpool in the Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got Benfica again, who of course topped our group last time, Liverpool and Dinamo Zagreb. That's again another tricky one. We'll come top of that group. Yeah, that's a bold <laughs> statement. That is a very bold statement. All right then, we'll simulate this Klopp? season. Klopp who? Yeah, and see what we're happens. New, we're the new Pep. Yeah. It... <laughs> Strikerless. You're joking, yeah, it is Pep. Is it? Yeah, it's... <laughs> of course it is. It had to be, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I guarantee Klopp is he at Man City. He always goes to Liverpool, doesn't he? I guarantee Jurgen Klopp, there he is, manager of Manchester City. Would That's you believe it? It's weird, isn't it? What it's that, so that would really happen? Oh, I doubt it. I don't think I, can't I don't think Guardiola would go to Liverpool. No, no I don't way. think so. That, it just so weird how it always happens. <laughs> it is kind of annoying, yeah. but there we go. All right, let's simulate this season. Third season then, and we keep our top four position. I'm happy with that. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Real Madrid, 100 points. Ooh, they've won the league easily, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, especially in 38 games. That's yeah. massive. That's just about like this season, really. They won it easy this season, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. But they didn't really have any competitors until Xavi took over at yeah. Barcelona. It was already too late. What a job he's done, didn't he? Oh, good God, yeah. 72 points. Valencia is on the same amount of points, but it looks like they pipped us at the very end there, which is going to be a bit That's annoying. And we drew that last game of the season against Mallorca to finish in third oh, place. That's annoying, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't mean too much, obviously, uh, seeding-wise in the Champions League. It kind of does. I think now we need to go for a qualifying yeah. stage, but I, it's worst things could have happened. Still yeah, take. we're still finishing above our rivals. Yeah, and we haven't finished under the top four yet in three seasons. So. No, no, absolutely. Are we getting any goal scorers? Oihan Sanchez got 28. And he's a centre right. midfielder hey. in the striker list. Yeah. Well, well, well. Yeah, this is a surprise, it? isn't it? The striker yeah. list, isn't it? Centre midfield coming to league goal scorer. I know. Right, let's take a look then at the other competitions. How do we do in the Champions League this year? We got to the quarterfinals again. Oh, so close. Into Milan, who of course we knocked out the previous year. Yeah. So they got their own back on us. Yeah, they knocked us out of the quarterfinals. So who did we knock out of the of the year? Uh... Well, I mean, they defeated us 5-2 on aggregate there. Uh, Barcelona were the only team left in Spain. Looking there. at that already, I know who we've knocked out. Oh, from our group, yeah. yeah. Cause Liverpool. Because ben, Benfica's there. Yeah. <laughs> we knocked out Liverpool. Uh, the first round knockout stage, we knocked out Olympiacos. We got an easy draw there. Yeah. Olympiacos going through. That must mean we topped the group. Yeah. You hey. said it. You hey. said it. No <laughs> way have you predicted that. We did. <laughs> we actually topped the group with 13 <laughs> points. We lost one game to Benfica away from home. So we we beat drew Liverpool to twice? Liverpool oh. at Anfield and we beat them 4-3 at home. 4-3. We beat Dynamo Zagreb. We beat Benfica 3-0. What a team we've Good got. God. What a team we've got. We have done so well there. Liverpool in the Europa League. That is hilarious. <laughs> Strikerless, man, it's just so good. Uh, Barcelona topped that group with Chelsea there, as you can see. So, uh, who is in the final? That's what I'm kind of curious with. Barcelona won the final. They beat Bayern Munich. 
Wow. Yeah. And Man yeah. City beat Liverpool the year before. Yeah. So no Champions League for Liverpool there. Klopp is crying. Actually, no, Klopp's not crying because he won it last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay then. So, I mean, we're not going to look at the Copa del Rey. We've got knocked out in the fourth yes. round. But Oihan Sanchez got 44 goals this season. Considering Good. last year when we were playing a striker, we could only get 19. Yeah. That's not bad at all. And Yaku yeah. Williams got more this year. So 65 goals in two players. Not bad at all. A strikeless team as well. Yeah, if we take a look at Sanchez, he has been playing in that shadow striker role. Yeah. We didn't play him in the last game of the season. And we drew. And we drew. He was oh. not selected. Doesn't say whether he was injured or not. He'd have to be injured, wouldn't he? Surely. No, he wasn't injured. No idea why he didn't play. No idea. But it did cost us. Cost us third place. Yeah. Which could mean we might not get qualified for, for next year. Assist-wise, we're quite worrying because we've only got nine throughout the rest of the team. But, hmm. We still did quite well, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, we're going forward to the fourth season. Now, we were given £20 million in our transfer budget, and the only real talent that we could go for was Hugo Gulamon. Uh, he trained at Valencia. As you can see, he came through the Valencia Youth Academy. He spent £21 million on him. He did play... 32 games last year, so he's a first-team player. But if you take a look, he is from Basque as his other nationality. So they class, obviously, as a nationality, yeah. don't they? I yeah. think there's a whole big argument about hmm. Catalonia and Basque, where they want to be their own independent countries, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, not something I want to get into, but still, as you can see, he is from the Basque area. So we've brought him in, £21 million. He can play in a number of different positions. Even at centre back. So I think we could be happy Good with that. Player. Good squad player yeah. indeed. Now, tactically, I think we'd be silly to go away from what we have this year. Yeah. So we stick with the Bilbao Strikerless. It's working really well, to be fair. And you know, it's very standard in, in the like the the uh, the player roles and everything, very similar. All I basically did was drop the advanced forward down into this role from the last one and kept the exact same instructions and yeah. didn't change any of it. So in that regard, yes. And people are gonna be asking me, where can I get this tactic? If you're a Patreon member, five pound tier, you get the access to the save game file. And as you can see, you get both tactics from this because that will be in the save game file. So on the five pound tier, thanks to everybody who's been sponsoring me on Patreon. You also get obviously at the five year, we'll be giving you a challenge to see if you can take on and do it after five years. Okay, how have we done at the start of the season? We've only played two games. We beat Granada 3-0, but we lost to Villarreal 2-1. Bad result well, there. It's not an easy minute. game. It's like, well, the last two seasons, they finished above us, something. they? So yeah, absolutely. It's and not, we had a player set off too. Well, there you go. We and equalized they, in the 88th. And they scored in the 90th. And they scored in the 90th. Yeah, Jared Moreno, good player. Uh, we've got Valencia up next, of course, and so stab right after. But our Champions just, League group... I've just seen that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Isn't that harder than the one we had last season? I think we'll finish top of it. <laughs> PSG and Juventus. Well, we'd say we're definitely going to come third. Yeah. I mean, Juventus... So I reckon we've got a good chance of coming second. You told us we've got beef with them. We've got yeah. history. Yeah. They eliminated us or knocked us out of a knocked final. Knocked final three now, uh, yeah. On so our way legs. We owe them. Rudy Garcia is the current PSG manager, so uh, it isn't... Is it Allegri still? It is Allegri at yeah. Juve. Okay. So it's a tricky one. Let's see, simulate this fourth season. Fourth season then, and we still get that fourth place. We're getting lower and lower. Yeah. <laughs> or further away from third. There's one team just coming above us again. That's what yeah. it's done, isn't it? But it's the top three that you would expect to finish above us. And yeah. obviously they've got the money. Yeah. And they've got the reputation to bring in better players. We've still basically got the same squad with one or two additions. The only worrying thing about that, we're further away from the top three this time. Yeah, but we're still points, but quite far away from fifth. Fifth, yeah. And that's the most important thing I think we need to look at. How how close are people gaining on us? Yeah. They're not right now. By the way, it looks like Levante have won the EC2 because they finished in a Europa Conference or yeah. a Europa League spot, or they might have won the cup. Look at Atletico Madrid's last five games. Wow, they absolutely crumbled. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. They played Batiste, Osasuna, who are back up, Barcelona, so Tenerife. Four games. I mean, the last game didn't matter, points. but if they won all of them, they They'd would won have the won league. the league. Yeah. One point. Yeah. Because <laughs> Barcelona won all five. <laughs> yeah. That is devastating, Ooh, isn't it? But they were gutted. Is it still Simeone? That's the question. No. Masilo Gallardo. Oh, this is a surprise. Uh, Xavi is still at Barcelona, who is at Real Madrid. Still Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah. So. Don't know what happened to Diego Simeone, but there we go. Okay, well, not bad in the league. We, we've managed to do our job. That's the, you know, if we're qualifying for the Champions League every single year, I don't yeah. think we can be too disheartened about no, that whatsoever. Not. And we're not getting knocked out in the stages, neither. We're going through to the knockout stages. So when you say that, yeah. let's find out how we've done this year. <laughs> we got to the semi final of the Europa oh. League. All right. I mean, we still finish on 10 points in yeah. our Champions League group, so it's a very close group. We beat PSG 3 1. 
I mean, that was always going to be the worst worst scenario, wouldn't it? Come yeah. Third or fourth. Yeah. To get to the semi-finals as well. Yeah. So we did draw against Juve and we did beat Paris once, but of course because we lost against them both in the other one. Yeah. Um, that's just how unfortunate, really. I think because they've obviously gone the opposite and they did draw any mm. and won. Yeah. So that's where it's uh, obviously been our downfall. But the fact that we got to the semi-final in another competition, I think I'll we can that. definitely yeah. take that. Uh, the way we went out though on a six-five on aggregate oh. after losing six-two, I won't take because that is really. Really annoying, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. The first leg, obviously, we have done down. so well there yeah. to get to that point. So if you take a look, our first leg, we beat them 3-0 at home. 3-0, and then we lose 6-2. You think, you think it's in the bag, don't you? And they scored in the 96th minute, which was the winner. 75th, 80th, and the 90th. So they scored three late goals to yeah. pull that back. I mean, even in the 66th minute. So if you think that goal went in there in the 75th minute, or the 66th minute, it's 2 all on an aggregate with three points ahead. Yeah. They needed three points just to equalise, and they scored four and knocked us out. Gutted. Absolutely gutted. Very disappointing because then they went on through to the final, and who did they play in Milan. the final? Milan, and they lost on penalties. <sighs> devastating. Yeah. Absolutely devastating. Uh, we knocked out Wolves in the quarterfinals. They went through on penalties there as well against Feyenoord. And in the second round knockout stage, we knocked out Napoli. Big Good team point. to knock them out. Yeah. And of course, in the first round knockout stage, we eliminated Rennes only on penalties. We only got managed to scrape through there. Oh, it's not a bad season to get to the, a, a, a semi-final of a European competition, but the, the Copa del Rey, which was, we, we hadn't even got close to it yet. Touched it, have we? Hadn't even we got close it. to it yet. No. Right, okay, so goals-wise then. In our strikerless, it's nowhere near as many as what we got last year. It's spread out, but it's nowhere near as many. No. That's where we've lost it, though, isn't it? Yeah. We're obviously not conceding many. No. Because we're still being successful in competitions, other than that Europa League second I mean, leg it is there. nice when you're playing stroke list to have a, a, more people scoring goals, but when you consider how many goals Nico scored last season. Yeah, and Sanchez got yeah. 40. Yeah. Now he's dropped down to 20. To, I mean, that's a big... Down 25 that's a, goals. That's a big loss as well. Yeah, yeah. You know? Absolutely. It didn't even look like he performed very well. No. Like, all our best performers were defenders. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's definitely something that we need to look into for. I mean, we the said next it right season. at the beginning, didn't we? We, we? we really needed a striker. Yeah. And now he's proven it now. Now's the time that we really need that striker. Yeah. If you look through our development centre, we have got players coming through who are looking okay, but nobody is like looking amazing. And John yeah. Hernandez, the guy that we signed to begin with, he isn't ready. No, he's, really he's not ready. Still, he's he? 18 still. Yeah. Uh, maybe another year, but I mean, he's scoring he's quite he, a lot for our, like youth. If you play two but... up front and you just line him in behind and to learn off the main striker, but you can't even do that. At the moment, no, no, you really. need another person to play up front. Yeah. All right, okay then. Let's go on forward to the fifth season. Right, so in the fifth season, we signed one player and it was this man, Ivan Martin. 26 years of age. He's come through the Villarreal Youth Academy, but yet again, if you take a look at his information, his other nationality is Basque. Obviously, he has a family member, mother or father, uh, who are from the Basque. So, I mean, he's a quality player, and it's another guy that I've had my eye on for the last couple of years. I almost signed in the season before, but we only had £20 million, and we got Hugo at that point. And I thought defensively we needed Hugo. Yeah. This time round, Eva Martin was still available for us to pick up because he hasn't been playing that many games. 27 games, but only 14 were starts. 13 were from the substitute bench. So I think it's a good signing to bring in. I mean, he did score one year 12 goals from yeah. 19 starts. Good, so yeah. not bad at all, really. And he's going to be another option for us in those strikerless roles or in the centre midfielder roles. So he gives us so many different options yeah. going forward. And that's what I like about him. Okay, so... Tactically, we need to look at this in regards to our strikerless. I don't think we're going to change too much because I think the season before we scored so many goals. Last year we didn't, but we are still fairly successful with it. Yeah. We just need them to, to put the ball in the net a little bit more. We can improve the players, so we're just going to have to just focus on what was working the season before. Yeah. The schedule-wise then, we've played a few games. Betis, we started off with a 3-2 victory against them. Uh, Nico Williams with a brace there. Mallorca was also a 2-1 victory, but they scored really late to get their consolation goal. But we did lose to Valencia. Abdou Diallo managed to score. All right, it's, it's, we've lost, but it's not a bad result against Valencia. I've been at their place as well. No, it? exactly. It is one of the teams you'd think that's going to be an hard game to Yeah, to, every you single know, time. you take it either way, when you? Yeah. Benfica seems again. to be a rival here because we're in the group with them again. <laughs> Oh, Dortmund. And Dortmund's in there too. My German team. Yeah. So. Is he there? Is he there? No, no, he's left because, he's yeah, he would have gone. Yeah, yeah uh, they gone do the have. City, he? oh, I don't think this is an updated database, so that wouldn't oh, have happened, right. but they do have Yusuf Makuku. Well, he's who probably is, at PSG then, isn't he? Yeah, who is absolutely disgusting. 
disgusting. Yeah. Like, that is gross. He's only 20. Uh, that, that's exactly who we need, really. Yeah, a striker who yeah. could do that. Simone and Zaggy's at the club there. So, Zagreb as well. We had them in the group last time yeah. as well. So. Yeah. That's... I'm going to say we're going to come second behind Dortmund. Yeah? Yeah. I think we'll, I think we'll do Benfica this time. I'd like to think that'll yeah. be a, a, a good thing for us as well. Two from two so far. Well, two from the three games so far. So league form-wise, it's those three clubs yeah, yeah. who are unbeaten yeah. so far. Okay, right. Final season. Champions League football is what we need yeah. at the very least. Qualify from the Champions League group. But for the love of God, let's at least get to the semi-final with the Copa yeah. Ray because <laughs> this is ridiculous. Got to do something there, haven't we? Yeah. And in the league, we managed to finish in fourth place. Again, with 83 points. That year, we would have won the league again. Yeah. 83, though, some way off Atletico Madrid. It's Valencia this time round who have finished yeah. on 87 points above us. Barcelona won the league quite comfortably as well. Quite comfortably, points, yeah. but yeah, we, we managed to scrape through. We had a very good end of season form. Everybody fourth, did, to be say, fair, top though. four teams, look at their, their results there. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we've done quite well there. Got to be happy with that. Don't have anybody in the top scorers and stuff. We just have yellow cards and clean sheets from Unai yeah. Simon with... With 17 third best in the league there. Yeah, our goal difference is only 44, really. So, yeah. So, that's where it's happened, does again, really, isn't it? Yeah. So, the competitions then. This is what come it all on. comes down come to. On. Give us a final. Semi final of the Copa del Rey oh. by Barcelona. I bet they went First on, round knockout stage by Chelsea in the Champions League. Qualified. So, we qualified. But then we we did qualify. Chelsea. So, we come second, aren't we? Yeah. Really Manchester Derby in the final there. Ooh. I'd have been absolutely devastated. Ooh. Let's take a look then at that first round knockout stage. They defeated us. Oh, 3-2 after we were 2-1 up in the first leg. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it keeps happening to us. It's always yeah. our second leg that costs us. But it was us and Benfica who went through. So we eliminated Dortmund. We keep doing this. We keep knocking out the big guys. Yeah. Dortmund finishing third place there. Yeah, we won point. three games. Um, we beat Benfica. We didn't beat Dortmund. We beat Zagreb 11-0 <laughs> on aggregate. We drew to Dortmund and lost them 2-1. Uh, we also lost to Benfica, but they drew three games. That was their problem. That's what done a minute. Yeah, they, they drew to Zagreb, which would have put them through if they Ooh. did beat them. So that's where it's cost them. We could have gone into the Europa League, but we didn't. We qualified. We got knocked down the first round knockout stage, though. It's not bad, but it's just we needed a show feed, didn't we? Yeah. It's just very difficult in this thing. But we, we still scored more goals, though. Nico Williams, this time round, stepped up. He's got better. Playing from that right-hand flank, he's got a very good 27, uh, 26 goals and 17 assists. But even the rest of the, the, the tribe there, four players all yeah. on double-figure goals there. Even Martin coming in, chipping in with 46 games he played. He, I, I reckon he played every single game. Yeah, probably. Maybe yeah. no, actually, because Unai Simon played 53, which is the goalkeeper. So he played a very good amount of games yeah. there. Um, I'm curious to Inyaki Williams how many games he did miss throughout this whole rebuild. Not a lot. No. Not a lot at all. So he missed eight games this year. He missed two games the year before, one the year before that, and of course... The 34 where he got the injury. So he didn't miss a lot considering. Just a consistent. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. What, what what a servant. Yeah. But he's 31 now, so he's starting to dip a little bit. Right, Dad. For Patreon members then, on the five pound tier, if they get their save game file, what is their five year challenge? Obviously, it really it's gonna be Copa del Rey. Copa del Rey. You gotta win it for me. You gotta yeah. win it for me. We're doing the best we can in the league. I don't think you're gonna do any better. I'd love it if you could split the two big ones and get the seconds place. Anything in Europe, I'll take, but win that big cup for me. That's yeah. what I want. That's my challenge to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let us know how you do. One thing I do want to check out, Nico Serrano's broke into the first team. He's been getting some game time. Hasn't developed as well as what he used to last year, and that's FM's fault, Nico, not mine. Yeah. All right? Uh, I tried my hardest <laughs> with you, but for some reason, they've lowered your potential. Absolute disgrace, in my opinion. You'd be the best player on the game if it was up to me. Prove them wrong, mate. Prove, Prove them wrong. wrong. Get out there and yeah, do your stuff, Yeah, you've got one year left on your deal as well, so you best better book your like ideas up. I'm only best joking. Of luck. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you're smashing that like button. Check out Manscaped down in the comments as well. Let us know if you managed to pick up any Manscaped products for your father this Father's Day. And of course, if you get on with Bill Bao, let us know how you do for that too. And we'll see you next Monday for another rebuild. And you guys voted for Watford this time round. Updated database, so they're relegating the championship yeah, first yeah. season. See you then. Bye-bye.